Breaking news, video just coming in. The prime suspect in the disappearance of Natalie Holloway, Joran Vandersloot, has just touched down in the U.S. This is at Birmingham International Airport. This is what we can see. You can see the black cars there waiting for the airplane. It is landed. We are not yet certain, or I am not yet certain, if he has exited the plane or not. But huge news. Vandersloot was extradited this morning from Peru to the state of Alabama. The Dutchman faces extortion and wire fraud charges. He's accused of trying to sell false information on the whereabouts of Natalie's remains to her family. The 18-year-old was last seen alive in 2005, leaving a nightclub in Aruba with Vandersloot and two other men. I want to go live now to Birmingham and our own Court TV legal correspondent, Kelly Kraft. Kelly, tell us everything. First of all, we know that Vandersloot has just arrived. What do we know about next steps and what happens now? Well, Ashley, first off, this is just huge news. We've been here for the last several days awaiting Euron Vandersloot's arrival here back to the United States and then eventually to this courthouse behind me, the federal courthouse, where he will face charges of extradition and extortion. I just wanted to take a look behind me to see if anything was taking place, to see if there was any sort of caravan or anything. Now, we heard, as you just reported, that he just landed at the airport, but then uh, we were talking with some people out here on the streets, and they were saying that there was an accident out on the roadway, so it might take some time for them to get here, but it could be here sooner than what we could expect. But all of this has gone back and forth for quite some time. These charges that he is facing, he was indicted on these charges back in 2000. This is wire fraud and extortion in connection with the Natalie Holloway case. These are really the only charges that even, you know, connect him to this disappearance of Natalie Holloway. And so he's going to be coming here and facing these charges in Birmingham, Alabama. So again, Ashley, as you reported, he has touched down here in the United States, here in Birmingham, Alabama. And we will expect to be seeing him sometime at the federal courthouse to face these charges. All right, and I'm just, again, this is a live shot. I do want our viewers to know that this is what is happening right here at the moment. You can see in the middle the three black cars. You can see the local police on the front with two cars, two vehicles, three vehicles behind. Uh, I would think, Kelly, that he has now exited the airplane. Those were right next to the airplane, but viewers, you're seeing as much as we know and we're seeing too. Do we know, Kelly, if we know, what happens after he's actually booked into that facility that you mentioned? Well, now that he is going to be on U.S. ground, the whole court process will will take place. We'll have an initial court date where he will appear and he will hear what the charges are against him. He obviously knows what they are, but he will officially be told you are facing the charges of extortion and wire fraud in connection with the Natalie Holloway case. And then he will plead and we'll have to see how he pleads, guilty or not guilty. And depending upon how he pleads, then the next step in the court process will continue. If he pleads not guilty, obviously the whole discovery process will start. We do know that a motion was sent for a public defender to represent Joran Vandersloot, so we knew that that happened. Um, and in regard to the next steps, we'll just have to hear when the initial court date takes place. And of course, we're going to be here to cover all the latest developments in this case. But again, this is just a moment that everybody has been waiting for. These charges go back to 2010. Beth Holloway, Natalie's mother, has said that this finally, finally, maybe they can get some sort of closure and some justice in this case. Yeah, it's been a long time coming, I know. And a reminder to everyone that, of course, it doesn't matter what country a person is from. If they're facing criminal charges here in the United States, they have a right to be represented by counsel, hence the reason for a motion that's been filed for a public defendant. Uh, defender, rather. All right, Kelly, what else did the author uh, share with you that you spoke with? Yeah, Ashley, we talked with an author of the book. His name is Cole Thompson. He wrote this book called Portrait of a Monster, along with another woman, Lisa Pulitzer. They both are New York Times bestselling authors, and they really got a firsthand account of what took place in this Natalie Holloway case, as well as the murder of Stephanie Flores. That was the murder of a Peruvian woman back in 2010. And let's listen to what the author had to say. He had so much great insight. He was talking about the prison system in Peru. He was talking about this scheme that you Joran Vandersloot kind of concocted. So let's let's listen to some of that interview. 
he came from a fairly normal family, seemed like a child of privilege. Again, his father was an attorney studying to be a judge. His mother was a grade school teacher. I think she taught, taught art therapy. He had two other brothers, and very early on, they figured that something was the matter with Joran, that, that he was potentially a monster. He beat one of his brothers nearly to death, and they had him living in a guest house, really a servant's cottage, on their property in, in Aruba. And that gave him the ability to come back and forth, go to the casinos, prowl the beaches, go drinking with his friends. So he was pretty much unsupervised from a very early age. And you know, it doesn't seem like he ever really matured. And also Joyce Vance, he's a federal prosecutor in Alabama when Vandersloot was charged. We do have a statement that I'd like to put up in which he said this is finally a long awaited opportunity for justice. He said, quote, we always say that justice delayed is justice denied. And there's a certain simple truth to that. He said, but this case makes me think sometimes justice delayed is actually worth it. It's not optimal. It's not what anybody would have wanted at the outset, but justice delayed is better than justice never delivered. Ashley, we'll send it back to you, but as attorneys, we both know sometimes there's a delay in, in justice, but this just has got to be quite the feeling for Beth Holloway to have Joran Vandersloot come back here and finally face these charges, the only charges, again, that really relate to the Natalie Holloway case. Absolutely, and we know that the body of Natalie Holloway has not been found, and um, she was declared dead by a court. I know they are glad he is finally here on U.S. soil facing charges related to this disappearance. All right, thank you so much for joining us, Kelly, and your great reporting. Still with us, I have attorneys Rich Schoenstein and Keely D. Blanchard. Let's talk about, you know, we do know that when he was in Peru, he initially agreed to the extradition and then said, nope, never mind, filed a, writ, or a habeas writ and said, I don't want to go. The judge said, yes, you're going. Rich, here he is. What do you think and what's next from your perspective? Well, I think it's going to be real interesting to see how it plays out. As that reporting makes clear, he's not on trial for the disappearance or the death of Natalie Holloway. He's going to be charged with extortion and wire fraud because allegedly he made an effort or maybe did get money from her mother based on the promise that he had information about her disappearance. So it'll be interesting to see that proceed. It's not probably the the crime that the parents and survivors would like to see charged here but it may be the only one that prosecutors have enough evidence for and keely if you were representing him would you attempt to work out some kind of deal and an admission or a guilty plea in a case like this well, I think it really depends on the circumstances. I suspect that the U.S. attorneys who have charged this case are hoping that it leads to something more. Um, ultimately, we're looking at fraud charges here, and um, we've got a situation where Mr. Vandersloot is really coming to, uh, you know, towards the end of his sentence in Peru. And so they had to take some action uh, on this case to make an attempt at, um, you know, finding out ultimately what happened to Natalie Holloway. And so uh, I think that ultimately um, they're probably looking for something more and they may be willing to put something on the table to bring some closure to Natalie's mother. Yeah, I would agree with you. And I just want to point out, we were just watching this, and I don't know if we're able to rewind it, so to speak, at all. But we did just see the defendant, Jorhan Vandersloot, exit the airplane, surrounded, obviously, by law enforcement for his safety, for their safety, and getting placed in that car. You can see law enforcement returning to their cars. It's the black vehicle in between the other two is the one that he just got into. And again, they have now driven off. But I did want to point out, we saw him get into that vehicle. 